I'm going to sit back. Oh, okay. You casual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, New Yorkers. It's a pleasure to be here with the director and star of the photograph, Stella McGee and Issa Rae. The movie's out on Friday, which is actually really serendipitous because it's Valentine's Day. Hmm. We can plan <laughs> Almost that. like there might be a plan there. <laughs> but Stella, I would love to first talk about, this movie is a love story, uh -huh. but it's also about mothers and daughters, the secrets women keep, the pasts they leave behind as they look for their futures. And so how did this project come about and what was the inspiration? I mean, I'd wanted to do a romantic drama. Um, I was thinking about that. I'd actually met with Will Packer like five years ago, but that didn't really come together at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I wanted to kind of make a, 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 write a script that was bigger than what I had done in terms of scope. Uh, and. Uh, at the time, my grandmother was being reunited with the daughter that she'd given up when she was a teenager. Uh, and I, I didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, and when, and when I found out, it was like different stories. Like one of my aunts was like, oh, her, her white father stole her from Jamaica and <laughs> Germany. Um, and I, I said that to my grandma. So they were going to meet back up. And my grandmother was, was, I was telling her the story. She's like, who told you that? No, I gave her up because I thought she'd have a better life moving with her father, leaving Jamaica. Um, and she kind of didn't have a better life than my aunt, my mom and my aunts. And so she was just going through kind of the guilt and I was getting to know her as a woman in a way I'd never known my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what don't we know like about our mothers? Um, and I wanted to do something that kind of had a, a big backstory like that. Yeah, the sweeping backstory does come across really well on screen. And so there's the past and the present and these two stories being told in parallel. And so how did you decide, casting really does a lot for mm -hmm. a film. How did you decide on Issa? And Issa, why did you decide to join this project? I mean, we had just done Insecure together and I loved working with her. And my episode was like a bottle episode where it was really just Issa and Kendrick Sampson. And it was like a quieter episode. And I was like really seeing, kind of like the more uh, the vulnerable side of Issa that's not always shown on Insecure necessarily, um, the quieter moments. And I just thought, you know, I love kind of casting against type and I thought she could bring a relatability to a character that was um, a little bottled up. Mm -hmm. um, I hated working with her. <laughs> <laughs> Experience was trash. But <laughs> <laughs> Seeing what I was trying to me. keep up appearances. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, <laughs> no, I really enjoyed working with her. And I, it, there's, um, obviously in TV, uh, a lot of directors don't necessarily tap into actors' performances because they come in like, oh, y'all got that. I'm going to focus more on the, the aesthetic, the visual aesthetic. And working with Stella was not like that. She was very involved. She was so smart. She had some great, even story points and questions that we didn't think about. And so I really valued that experience and was just like, oh, she was just great to have on set. Um, and so when I got the script, uh, I don't know, was it a couple of weeks later? Or was it like a month later? Maybe I don't a few know. months later. Maybe a few months later. Uh, I was just so excited to read it and, and saw that it was a love story, a black love story, and was immediately like, oh, what best friend does she want me to play? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so it was honored that she was thinking of me for the lead. And I think I, I fell in love with the writing. I fell in love with the story. And just the idea to play someone that uh, I never imagined, you know, as a little girl, you know, watching films growing up, I never imagined that I could play. It was just um, uh, an honor and a treat for me to just be considered. And what is it like to play against type and to finally be able to play the romantic lead? Because in general, black women don't get these opportunities. Uh, it was, uh, you know, I tried not to get into my head about it, but I was, um, I just tried to embody the character and who, who she was. You know, I asked Stella a ton of questions about me. I tried to understand her intention and more, focused more on getting to the root of who she was and what her story was and where she was supposed to end up. Um, and then I think afterwards, seeing it on screen for the first time was when it really set 
uh, when it really hit that, you know, this was a role that I was playing and a role that I was embodying. Stella, what makes a good love story for you? And what makes a good black love story? A good love story for me is one where the lead is also on a journey to love herself. Mm. You know, I... <laughs> Damn, let me be good <laughs> Oh my God. You better know. I do, like, I do think that's why. She was hard to work with, okay. Um, no, I do think that's part of why some of these rom coms have gone out of fashion. It's like, it, it just can't be about getting a guy. Right. You know, like, you, if, if, a, if the woman is a lead, then I need her to have a journey and an arc and it be a, 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 somewhat of a coming of age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we see two comings of age here, mm -hmm. really. The coming of age of a mother and the coming of age of a daughter. Yeah. And so I'd love to show the audience a clip of what some of what we're talking about. Mm. <laughs> the mothers we see in this movie are not your typical movie mothers. Mm -hmm. They are incomplete and flawed and messy, but also interesting. Mm -hmm. So why did you make that choice? And was it difficult to make that choice when in general audiences seem to want very narrow depictions of women in motherhood? I mean, I was pulling from my mom, not that she's that woman, but <laughs> you know, like the difficult relationship it can be when you're a teenager growing up and how much I fought. So to me, it's like, I, motherhood is complicated, my relationship with my mother is complicated, I wanted to show that. Um, I don't think it was difficult for me because I was so invested in these characters and what they were trying to say. I think it was more difficult for the studio, probably, because um, they were worried like that people would be turned off by these people. But I was like, I feel like if they feel honest and it's well acted, in this case, Marsha Stephanie Blake, you know, you'll be invested. Mm -hmm. Issa, how did you prepare for the role of May, who's this curator with a difficult relationship with her mother, and she's not willing to make herself vulnerable? So what kinds of things did you do to get into character? Um, well, aside from the relationship I have with my mother, which is stellar, I, I love my mother, I, and I uh, cherish the fact that we're very close. Um, I did share a lot in common with May in terms of uh, the vulnerability uh, or the lack of vulnerability, the, the thoughts of feeling like you're not necessarily good at love. And um, there were certain dynamics that I explored and researched just between women um, or just of women that I admired that had fraught relationships with their mothers. Um, and really the script gave you so much, mm -hmm. um, especially since you you got a lot of the backstory of, of uh, Christina May's mother's journey, uh, and that informed, the story informed so much of the present and her dynamics with kind of her outlook, her entire outlook. And I think about specifically how parents inform so much of the decisions that we make mm -hmm. um, subconsciously. I think about an example that just happened to me last year where I, when I was 11, I overheard my parents talking, and they were talking about me, and the context that I heard at the time was, Joisa is too bossy to be in a relationship ever. That's what I heard. Yeah. And I left like, wow, that's what my parents think of me. Mm -hmm. And it informed that, it informed my dynamic in relationships for 23 years <laughs> until casually last year, my mom said, yeah, it's like when I told your dad that one time, you will never let a man walk all over you. <laughs> and I was like, what? That's not, run that back. <laughs> what did she say? And she was like, yeah, we just thought you were, you were so headstrong in a great way where, and it was it, in, her, in their mind, it was positive and I had taken it negatively, but that wasn't her fault. It was just my interpretation. But there those things where it's like your, what your parents do and what they say obviously affect you and how you feel like you deserve to be treated. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I consider that obviously with the dynamic with Christina and May. 
Absolutely. That's interesting, the way you sort of hear one thing as a child and let it inform you. I mean, 11, damn. Yeah, I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When we think of romantic comedies, Love Jones seems to be the quintessential <laughs> black romantic, I mean, romantic drama. And for so many years, that has been the standard. And now you're really trying to raise that bar. So do you think you are following in the footsteps of Love Jones or are you breaking new ground or both? I think both. I think both. I mean, I've watched Love Jones too many times to act like it didn't inform the film. So that feeling of watching that movie and wanting to see more smart black characters just figuring things out, um, like that, that's what I'm always trying to do, and that was partly being 16, watching that movie, being like, oh wow, like, you know, I can think about things in different lights, and we can, you know, be smart and, you know, insightful and talk with our friends and not be stereotypes. Um, but then trying to break it even further. I mean, this is a family drama as well, so, you know, just kind of broadening, I guess, the the topic. Absolutely. Another thing I noticed about this movie was chemistry, and mm -hmm. chemistry can really make or break a movie. Mm -hmm. And so what was it like working with Lakeith Stansfield? Uh, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I see that some members of the audience would like to work with him as well. <laughs> uh, Lakeith is phenomenal. He's an artist, and we had met um, a couple of times in passing and worked together once on a music video. Uh, which was a recreation of Friends, where he played Chandler and I played mm -hmm. Rachel. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I really just, uh, we got to bond, all the, all the, the cast got to really bond that day. Uh, but we talked about the, the first, the first scene that we shot of the movie was May and Michael meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we had to have dinner before and things like that and, and, and spoken, but, we hadn't gotten a chance to spend that much time together. And so we really liked the fact that May and Michael were meeting at the first, uh, for the first time and getting to know each other as we were getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. And you know, I fell in love with him just as a person, as an artist, while we were working on this film, uh, while the character May was falling in love with Michael. So it was, um, it was really a treat to work with him. Mm -hmm. And you just, you learn so much from him just because he is so focused and um, so conscious concentrated and gives it his all. He's, he's really, he's Stella. And Stella, how did you decide on him as the lead? Because he it plays against type in many ways. Yeah, I didn't talk to him for a while <laughs> because I did think like, oh, he's quirky and he's not this guy, he's not gonna wanna play this and I don't know if he's right. And, and then um, I, the, we, I Skype, we set up a Skype and when we started talking, he was so in tune with the character and he was so kind of honest about how he related to, to, the, to Michael because of personal, you know, personal experiences. And it's just like those eyes you see up there, that was coming through the Skype at me and I felt it. <laughs> so, you know, and then we, we, me and him got on a plane and went to Louisiana where Issa was to just read the date scene, the first date scene. And as soon as, as soon as he opened his mouth, I was like, oh, this is it. You let us improv for like seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, girl, you she was on a lunch break. I was. But I was like, we gotta make sure it's right. And you right. demanded that I come. <laughs> I did. <laughs> In the photograph, we have this very specific sound and look and shape. So what were some of the creative influences? If you had to make a vision board, which I know is a silly word, <laughs> but if you had to make a vision board for yeah. this movie, what would be on it? I mean, it's all the like moody romance stories. So I feel like me and my DP had, we had Love Jones, we had Carol, we had um, In the Mood for Love. We just, all the movies that weren't afraid to be romance in the darkness, mm -hmm. you know, in the nighttime. Uh, and just a lot of, a lot of saturated photography. Yeah, I noticed you leaned into the darkness mm -hmm. and you know, oftentimes when you have black characters on screen, people don't know what they're doing and they like overlight them right. and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I noticed that you were willing to leave this movie dark. Yeah. And we, black was still very beautiful mm -hmm. in that darkness mm -hmm. and we were clearly able to see the characters. Mm -hmm. And so 
did you, how did you work with the DP to do that yeah. and bring about that look? We just committed to not, you know, he's someone who like Mark Schwartzbard, um, he's someone who likes to stick to as natural lighting as possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were just always trying to find, like with, with Keith, I just loved him kind of a little shadowed and, you know, just Issa just like glowy and warm. And, you know, I just like literally the first meeting in, um, I think we're showing that clip later, but the first meeting, we originally shot it in the big white open space of the museum. And my editor, every day I'd be like, ugh, this is so ugly. You know, they're meeting <laughs> in this bright white light. I was like, what have I done? Like, this was a mistake. And, and that was the scene we reshot and I put it into like a smaller, darker, intimate room. And immediately I was like, okay, this is, this is the movie. So we stuck with it. And then it goes all the way to colorist, Mitch Paulson, who, you know, we committed to keeping the color, you know, just as saturated as we could go before he was like, we've gone too far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at that museum scene where Issa, um, not Issa, where May <laughs> and Michael meet for the first time. I love how the lights come down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Issa, where does your sense of humor come from? <laughs> a dark place. I love your voice so much. <laughs> How much I loved it, you're perfect. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my sense of humor comes from my mother, for sure. She's uh, hilarious. She's um, really goofy. A lot of people meet her, and I, I crack up because they're like, oh, your mom's so elegant and so refined. And <laughs> it's like, no, she's not. She's so clumsy. <laughs> she's extremely goofy and uh, ridiculous for no reason. But I love that she raised us that way. You know, there, there are five of us, and um, she used to prioritize us spending time with each other, and there was this game that we used to play at the dinner table, because we could not turn the TV on at the dinner table. We had to talk to each other, which was irritating. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to play this game called the Don't Laugh and Smile game, and that was basically us eating dinner and trying to make each other laugh. And if you laughed, if you broke, you were out of the game. Mm -hmm. And I would always be the first one out because I just found <laughs> my siblings to be the most hilarious people on earth, but it helped me to like, you know, hone mm. my, my comedic voice. Um, and by hone, I mean stealing their jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Theft is always encouraged. <laughs> uh, Stella, thus far you have directed films that you've written. Mm -hmm. What are the pleasures of directing your own work and what are the challenges? Um, the pleasures, I mean, I feel like I'm so rooted in exactly what each line means, how it's supposed to look. It's kind of just ingrained in the writing. So I find when I'm prepping, I'm just already in it, um, which helps me actualize it, I think, more clearly. Um, the negatives, the, I would say I become obsessed, <laughs> mm. you know, like, not that I'm, wouldn't put the same work into Insecure, but <laughs> <laughs> when I come to direct, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna refrain from comments. It's so specific. Any other show. <laughs> I directed it. this. I directed this season. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, it makes it. <laughs> um, no, I'm so specific that I can drive people crazy. Whereas opposed to when I'm directing someone else's work. It's like, it's more collaborative, so I don't have to take whole ownership over it, yeah. Are you a perfectionist? Um, yeah, I can be, I can be. And I also know when to fold sometimes. I was gonna say, yeah. how do you know when something's ready, when you've made it as good as it's gonna get? I just, I just really bounce it on my head, am I happy? It's never gonna be perfect, but um, like, do I love the shaggy bits and it does, is, I just weigh out the pros and cons. Is it worth, you know, what, what more is going to come from it if I keep cutting into it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Issa, are you a perfectionist? Uh, I'm a regretionist. <laughs> I uh, release and regret. Because I feel like if I, if I hold on to it too dearly, then it'll never go out there. And so I would almost rather 
Mm. Put it out there and then be like, oh, I know what I'm, I know what I'm gonna do next time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> next time, because um, I do stress. I stress a lot and I overthink about a lot of things. But I know that I'll, I'll, that I'll let that cripple me in a way that or hinder me, and I just refuse to let that happen. Mm -hmm. So, how do you transition between writing, producing, and acting? Uh, I. Well, with Insecure specifically, because a project like this is different, uh, I make sure to wear one hat at a time, uh, and I let people know that. You know, when I when I am, thank God, I work with incredible people. So, mm -hmm. I have a partner in Prentice Penny, who is the showrunner, and you know, we collaborate, we we talk every single day, and we make sure we're on the same page. Uh, but in the writers' room, you know, I'm a writer, and when we're in production. I'm a producer, but when we're on set, like, I don't necessarily want to be answering questions about. Yeah, you you separate them well. Like, when, sure. we, when I'm on set with you, I didn't know, like, the first time I was like, is she going to be jumping behind the camera? Is she going to, and you, you're very much just like, I'm focused on performance. And, you know, we have these meetings, extensive meetings with mm -hmm. directors beforehand where they can ask all the questions that they want. And so at that point, I trust the directors and also, mm -hmm. you know, the showrunner and writers to, to make the scene happen. And there are those rare times when, when I'm in a scene where it's like, mm, that's not what we talked about. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll, then I'll you know, say something, but that happens pretty rarely. So you're both writers. What does your writing process look like for each of you? I mean, for me, writing like the photograph, I was very much secluded and I, I try to just treat it like a real nine to five, like mm. wake up, and write for eight hours, you know, take a lunch break um, and try to get the draft out so I can start rewriting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is revision important to your process? Yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like I depend on the writers in my circle that have always been around to read drafts and getting really good feedback and just going to work on, I'm not afraid to just like delete and start over. Oh, yeah. that's a good skill for a writer to have. <laughs> <laughs> I broke through, like, I don't know at what age. I went and did, like, the Screenwriters Colony in Nantucket, mm -hmm. and it was really, it changed my whole writing style. You know, I had a really good mentor who gave me fantastic notes, and I remember just having a week left, and I was like, how much can I do? And I, I deleted 30 pages out of a script and rewrote, and it was, like, life-changing. I was like, oh, this is how easy you can improve something if you kind of commit. Yeah, I think similar to that, it, writing alone, like it, I am very much like wake up in the morning and dedicate specific time to it. Um, but that's when I'm working on projects that are like features or books or things like that. Book, because I don't have books <laughs> like you. Um, <laughs> I know we need your writing process. Right, right. <laughs> Feature Ugh. that. Uh, so, I, and then with the with Insecure, it's a writer's room, so it's extremely collaborative, and I really, really enjoy uh, taking part in that process because you're getting so many brilliant minds, and um, there is a, a specific timeline. Like, I love deadlines. I love to work with deadlines, even if they're forced. Uh, and that, specifically, is a nuanced process in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I find that I've been, in my own personal writing, taking a lot from the writer's, writer's room process. Yeah, that process can be really helpful in terms of so many different voices coming together in ways that sometimes you don't expect. Like, oh, hmm, I hadn't considered that. Absolutely, and I would had to fight the, the urge to immediately shut down an idea, like, oh, that's not gonna work, because so many times, you know, those not great ideas lead to really great ones mm -hmm. um, if you just let people talk and, and talk it out. So I just find that process so rewarding. Mm -hmm. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a formal writing process. I wish I had any sort of discipline, but I don't. <laughs> I just procrastinate <laughs> all the time. And then I write up at the last possible minute when the editor is like, if you don't give this to me, I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> and then I do it. Yeah. And then it comes out. It's really, a, I don't recommend it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Stella, how do you like to work with actors? And how do you try to create a positive, not positive, but a productive vibe on set? Why are you looking at me? I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting to see what this is going to say. 
I try to create a trust <laughs> that I did not make with Issa. Um, <laughs> Um, like I, I try, I, I'm very like formal at the start. Like I try to build a relationship kind of organically. Um, like I remember on Insecure, you caught, like you caught me joking around with Amy and Obi once and I was so mad. I'm like, damn, she knows I'm like, I'm silly now. You know, like I, I try to just create like a professional space to start. We had like a really great dinner. I love to kind of sit down and talk. We sat down for a while um, and, just, and just spoke and try to build, you know, some sort of trust and rapport. Um, and then, you know, when I'm on set, I, I don't know, I'm like, I don't know. Um, I mean, you're very for focused, yeah. you're disarming too, in a way that makes, um, makes it easier to trust you mm -hmm. in a way, of just knowing that there, you have a very specific vision yeah. and the fact that you are actually lax about it, like you mm -hmm. are a perfectionist, but you're, you're lax about um, I, I try to give space. Yes. Like I'm not the writer who or director who comes on set and expects you to do it a specific way. Like Issa playing May means May is gonna shift off the page, and I have to give her some space to create that. Lakeith with his uh -huh. herringbone chain, like no, that wasn't in my mind. But you have to like give him his space to kind of find it. Mm -hmm. um, like I'll never give a line read or or something like that. Uh, and. Yeah, and I had an actor say, whenever, you're, whenever you make a joke, you're serious, and whenever you're being serious, you're joking. <laughs> um, and I was like, that's kind of true. Like, because uh, I guess I'm like, I want to joke around because I'm like, oh, this is terrible, and I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and, if I'm, and then I'm dry, and I'm deadpan, so I'll be sarcastic, and I'll be like, no, girl, that was great. Yeah. I feel like I didn't get that courtesy, but got it. <laughs> <laughs> Issa, what do you look for from a director? Someone who's very specific and, and uh, has the vision. I know that's, that, that seems very obvious to say, but you'd be surprised. Um, I think you have to know what you're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know what you want for your act, from your actors, and you have to be a really good communicator. Mm -hmm. I, I value that so much just in terms of whether or not you're relaying a very specific emotion or taking me down a, a path or a journey. Like I've, I found that I, I love to play and I love different experiences and I love directors who are open to that. Um, and I follow instructions a lot, so I kind of have to be told like, okay, now we have it, you, have to, you, you can do your thing now or you can, you can try something else, you can try something new. So, um, I feel directly. like the like the best like I feel like with you and with other actors, it's like that I really have loved working with. It's like you come wanting specific direction. You want me to come in and say, "I'd love you to go here and then here and then do this," and then within that, give you space to like shift. Because I respect. I mean, I guess as a writer, I respect what's on the page, and even in playing, I want to make sure that I'm playing within mm -hmm. the story. And mm -hmm. you know, I think about uh, other actors that I've worked with who aren't necessarily, uh, well like writers who aren't in the writer's room. Mm -hmm. and, and I think about Natasha. Natasha Rothwell, who plays Kelly on the show, is in the writer's room. Her improv game is stellar. Like we just let her do what she wants. Yeah. But she's also able to improv on story, which is really valuable. And you find that a lot of other actors that come in are super great, but they improv yeah. and they're not, we can't use any of it. We're right. just like, okay, you're playing, but this is going to end up on the cutting. <laughs> That's cool. You're like, cut. Okay, yeah, that was great. Thank you. Ah, thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, I think that, you know, I, I am conscious about that uh, very much so. Mm -hmm. And what is it that you bring most to the table as an actor? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm very hungry. I love to learn. I'm... Um, I thought you were talking about food for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, I try to be a vessel, you know? I really respect the process, and I think you're, I'm always gonna come in with a writer's mind, so I'm gonna constantly ask questions about story. Mm -hmm. And I found that I need to exercise that a lot more, you know, just with, uh, even if it's a conversation and you know talking to someone like Stella is so great because we had a lot of conversations on set when I mm -hmm. didn't necessarily understand an intention or um, 
didn't really understand um, maybe a character's journey or a relationship, and it was refreshing to work with a writer director because she had all those answers. Mm -hmm. um, and if she didn't, she was honest about it, and we might find it together. Uh, but yes, I, I I would say that I bring that to the table, a, a, a writer's mind, and uh, I'm a, I'm a vessel. Mm -hmm. Stella, what do you want people to take from the photograph? Um, I'm always bad at these, these particular questions. Um, you know, I think, uh, A, the generational aspect of it, that the way we love is often based on the way our parents loved us. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I'm not hating. She <laughs> not let me prosper. <laughs> I'm laughing at them, not you. I love it. Uh, uh, and being able to show black women as vulnerable, because often we're constantly have to be strong, fixing it, magic. <laughs> and we can't always be that. Mm, yeah. Not every day. No. Only on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Get shit done Monday. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for each of you? Uh, I'm working on a show uh, at, at Apple, if I could write it. <laughs> you don't have time, girl? <laughs> now I do. Right after this, after, for, after, for, after the 14th. After the 14th. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, I am uh, editing Insecure, uh, the fourth season. <laughs> yes. Um, and to have a, another movie coming out after this, April 3rd, which is actually comes out the week before Insecure, called The Lovebirds. Um, and then continuing to, to write and produce, uh, in addition to a lot of other things that I'm trying to balance. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot. I, it's a lot. <laughs> now when I looked at your little Wikipedia page. <laughs> Damn. She got about <laughs> 10 businesses. Tell me about that 27th hour in your day. Girl, where? <laughs> we have some questions from the audience. All right. Love your natural hair, Issa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I disappointed you. <laughs> what was the background regarding the choice for the wig in this role? First of all, it's not a wig. <laughs> first of all, first of all, it's a sew in, no? No, it's clips. It's clips. First of all. First of all, First that shady ass question. <laughs> sister. <laughs> My sister, I love your life. <laughs> you know, we are offering you the top hair here. <laughs> Why you do that to yourself? I mean. Whew. But. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Felitha, Felicia Leatherwood, who did a fantastic job on the film. Issa's main hairstylist. Natural hairstylist. Natural hairstylist. Doing this. I know. She, do you know that when I was like, okay, so I want to create a, a new look for Issa so she can be seen completely different, like she's never seen, and you'd never, you'd never done this look. Felicia was just like, oh, okay, so she, she going to be simple. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, girl, like she's just gonna be a normal. We know on Insecure you can't be doing your hair like that every day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now you cover for me. I do my hair differently every day. Right. I always wear three different styles. Today. <laughs> but it was to just give you a different look um, and create May. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to keep a natural, I thought it was important that you know, you promote natural hair, you give that image. I didn't want to change that, so I wanted it to feel like kind of a longer natural blowout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it sure does. Sure, sure. <laughs> For Stella, what is your biggest challenge in your career as a director working in Hollywood, and specifically as a black creative? Mm -hmm. I don't think people trust you, mm. you know? I don't think they trust you can run a set, or make the right decisions. I think you're just questioned a lot more about how you do things, about the stories you tell, if anyone will care. Um, you know, I just feel like I'm, I imagine I'm questioned more than the average white male director. 
I, I, I don't know that you're imagining. <laughs> <laughs> For Issa and Stella, I am a black woman and aspiring television writer who is leaving corporate law to pursue my dreams. However, mm -hmm. I mean, damn. Yeah. Good, Good luck. <laughs> However, I'm afraid I may fail. How did you find your confidence and do you have any advice on what to do next? Um, yes, uh, good luck. Uh, <laughs> I found my confidence by failing. Failing is, right. you know, a part of the process. It's, if, if you want it, it's temporary, you know, and you learn from it. So you, you kind of can't be afraid to fail because you will along the way. And there, there is a part of me that doesn't, if the journey is ongoing, then to me, failure doesn't exist. It's if, if you give up, then you failed. Um, so you just got to keep at it and know that this is what you want to do and uh, make sure that you're working with other people who believe in you as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I lived in New York and I was working in PR and quit that to go back to school to start screenwriting. Uh, and you just, you just have to take the leap and stick with it and know that it might take three years, five years. <laughs> you know, it just might take the time. This is for Issa. As a massive fan of Insecure, I especially love the soundtrack. Shout out, mm -hmm. Spotify playlist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how you have helped bring various R&B and hip hop artists, I think, to the forefront. How do you find new music and who are some of your favorite artists at the moment? Amazing. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for that compliment. Uh, I've always just been a huge fan of hip hop, hip hop and R&B. I use music to write. Um, and I guess I, I'm, I'm just always trying to discover new artists. So that's searching um, for specific types of music. I think we have great music platforms now that make it a lot easier. And I'll go deep into, if I hear a song, see who's featured on it. and go listen to their entire album. Like I just do a lot of deep dives. I read a lot of articles about up and coming artists and specifically with the show, wanna, show, wanna showcase um, local artists, artists from LA, uh, independent artists and female artists. And so that is a mandate and we have a wonderful music supervisor who abides by that and will just send me folders of music and I will listen to every track on uh, in those folders and write notes about whether or not they resonate with specific scenes or think about scenes in mind. So it just plays such a huge part in the show. Um, and yeah, it, to, to me, it elevates it. It does. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is for Stella. How important was it to hold tight to your narrative as a black woman in a, in a majority white space? Do you feel like you were able to bring your full vision to life? I mean, it's, it's very important. I mean, and luckily now I'm at the point financially that I can just say I'll walk away <laughs> um, if it doesn't feel right. Uh, even, but even with that, you know, so I, I'm able to kind of avoid certain pitfalls uh, I wasn't able to earlier in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, working with a studio, it's not always gonna, it's just not your independent baby. So there's some comp compromises that you kind of have to make to hit the 2,500 theaters. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Issa, is there a black version of Gossip Girl in the works? And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear If this so, one. when should we expect to see it? Y'all are buck wild. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Stella's getting all this. So what is it like to be oppressed? <laughs> um, you not oppressed. Is there <laughs> Uh, is there a black version of Gossip Girl <laughs> in the works? Uh, not quite, but the idea that I presented um, in that video that I assume you're referencing is for sure in the works. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay, girl, you're my Come through. <laughs> I'll do Our the second row friends are <laughs> delightful. I said I'll do the pilot. You'll do the pilot for real? Y'all heard her say that? <laughs> Stella, I swear to God. <laughs> and this is being recorded. So. <laughs> uh, Stella, what inform this is this is a good question. 
What informed your portrayal? <laughs> oh. Audience shade. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. What informed your portrayal of the black men in this film? They seem so in touch with vulnerability. Mm. I agree. I'm probably way too easy on my father. <laughs> and my exes. Um, <laughs> you know, when I always write men with the benefit of the doubt, uh, from my, per like, from a woman's perspective, I just, I try to not think of myself as a woman's perspective when I'm writing a man as, m more, and write them from a human perspective of how I feel like I would deal with something in their situation. So I feel like Michael has a lot of me in him. And so I end up, you know, and, and I want to show black men as, you know, as, as loving. There are loving black men. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Issa, I loved your comment when you did the Oscar announcements about the lack of women directors. <laughs> Would you ever direct a movie? Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> I have no desire to direct, actually. I don't feel like a terrible woman for saying that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just don't, I know my lane and I've, I've done directing on a very small scale with web series and music videos and things like that. And it wasn't until I observed someone like Melina and um, someone like, you know, even Prentice and Stella, like there's, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I was, I, I watched them on set and I'm like, wow, they really like this. Like they're smiling. And I, would be, <laughs> I would be so mad and stressed all the time. And I thought that that's how you were supposed to feel as a director. And I was just like, oh, you can actually enjoy doing this. Um, so no, I, I, I feel like I do enough. <laughs> and, yes. Um, I don't need to direct. I'm great. <laughs> I have one last question for each of you. Uh, what do you like most about your work and how you do it? Wow. Um, I don't think I could do anything else. I've been fired from many other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is all I really can do. Um, but I love, I love directing, I love writing, I love creating worlds. I used to walk around and make up dialogue in my head and you know, I just, I love storytelling and being able to be paid for it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's nothing more powerful than having an idea and just executing mm -hmm. that vision and uh, to be able to do that and work with incredible people. Like the collaboration process I find is the most rewarding. Like I just, I love working with people from different points of view, who have different points of views from different backgrounds and um, I also really just love working with black people. We have so many different <laughs> stories to tell and mining that um, is, it's just really exciting to me. So I'm, I'm excited to be alive during this time and to be able to create. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is really an incredible time to be alive. There's like more than five black movies every year. It's <laughs> amazing, like, oh my God, <laughs> we might be able to go see one every day of the week. <laughs> One day we'll tell our kids. <laughs> it used to be worse. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for this thank incredible you. movie. Thank you. Thank you. Get it? Stella McGee and Ethan Ray. Thank you, Roxanne Gay.